This is section 1.6, which is graphical transformations. So what we're going to talk about is transformations, vertical and horizontal translations, reflections across axes, and vertical and horizontal stretches and shrinks, and then combining all these. Okay, so vertical and horizontal translations. So this was the probably the biggest topic of Algebra 2. So hopefully this is a little bit fresher in your memory. Um, so horizontal translations, you can see here that if we have a, tr so if we have a, a number inside the parentheses with the X, um, or inside the absolute value sign or underneath the square root sign or any of those examples, um, it's going to be opposite of what we think. So if it's minus C, we're moving it to the, this is wrong. <laughs> Okay, this is actually wrong. So minus would be moving it to the right and plus C would be moving it to the left. I just realized that. I snipped this from the PowerPoints. They are backwards. Okay, so um, yeah, so good thing we corrected that. So F of X minus C is moving it to the right and F of X plus C is moving it to the left. Okay. Vertical translations, um, if we're going, if we have a plus C on the outside, we're moving it up C units. If we have a minus C, we're moving it down by C units. Okay, so here's an example. Describe how the graph of F of X equals absolute value of X can be transformed to the graph of Y of X, or sorry, Y equals absolute value of X minus four. Okay, so this would just be shifted down four. So our normal parent function for absolute value looks like that. Let's change colors here. So this graph would be moved one, two, three, four. Would look like that. Okay. Um, if we want to, since we're doing this example, it's good to look at a different one. So let's say we have f of x equals absolute value of x plus two. Oops, mix in parentheses here. <laughs> okay, absolute value of x plus two. So this would be shifted to the left two. I don't know what was going on on that previous slide. Okay, so we take our original, our original graph and we'd shift it to the left two. Okay, so that, hopefully that refreshes your memory from last year about vertical and horizontal translations. The next thing we're going to look at is, so this is an example of finding the equation. So if you have a picture of a graph, um, just matching it with the equation that goes with it. So you can see here, this is our original function. <clears throat> and then, oops, down here, so we have, this would be shifted down three. This would be shifted to the left two and this would be shifted to the right three. So this is just giving an example. So the red graph is our original graph, the blue graph is the transformed graph. Okay, so reflections. So across the x-axis, you're gonna have a negative outside. If it's across the y-axis, you're going to have a negative inside the parentheses with the x. And then if you had a reflection over the X and the Y, we call that through the origin. So you'd have a negative on the outside and the inside. And then stretches and shrinks. So um, if you, you can tell I totally, I should have fixed that first slide too. But um, so I tried to make this less complicated and let's see if I did a decent job of that. Okay. So if you have a number inside the parentheses with X, then it's going to, I put narrow and wide because that's, that's at least how my brain thinks of things. I know not all functions will get narrower or wider. I always kind of default to thinking about a parabola. So that's why I say narrow and wide. But so if you have a horizontal shrink, that you're thinking of something that's pushing in from the left and right, it's going to make your graph narrower or steeper um, 
So that's if you have a C value inside that's greater than one. So if you had something like 2x, that's gonna make it narrower, it's gonna make a horizontal shrink. Okay, or you, sometimes they say compression too. This book's using stretch and shrink, so I'm trying to be consistent. Okay, then it's going to be a horizontal stretch. So again, if you can think of like two things pulling your graph out to the left and the right, that's going to make your graph look wider if it was a parabola, um, less steep if it was something like a line or a cubic function. Um, and that's going to be if your C is less than one. So, and all of these, these don't clarify the between zero and one. So we're not talking about negatives right now because that was the previous slide with reflections. So negatives are going to tell you if you have a reflection the number itself. So this would mean like if you had a fraction, like one half, it's gonna make it wider. Okay, more often you're gonna see the, the C outside and that's going to be a vertical stretch or shrink. So um, C, if C is greater than one, it's gonna make it narrower, it's gonna be a vertical stretch. So again, thinking if you put two things on the top and bottom and pull and pull up and pull down, it's gonna make your graph look narrower. Um, and then shrinking, compressing it from the top and bottom is going to make it look wider. Okay. The other thing that while I'm thinking about right now to mention this, oh, you can always graph it. Like we have technology, so graph it and see what it looks like. So you can graph your original function, graph the transform function, and it's a really quick way. So yes, it's important to kind of generally understand how these things change your graph, but we have the technology available, so you always can do that. Okay, so example five is finding equations for stretches and shrinks. So it says, let C1 be the curve defined by Y1 equals F of X equals X cubed minus 16X. Find the equations for the following non-rigid transformations of C1. So it says a vertical shrink of C1 by a factor of four. So this is going to be Okay, this means that if it's a vertical stretch, that means the number is going to be outside. So that's saying that we had, so let's, I don't know, I'll call this G of X. So this is going to be 4 times X cubed minus 16X. So that means that we're going to have, if I distribute this, 4X cubed minus 64x. So that would be a vertical stretch. So notice how that four is on the outside. Now, if I want a horizontal fit, so if I see horizontal, that means I'm going to put it inside with the x. So that would be, let's call this h of x. That would be three x cubed minus 16 times three x. Okay, so then I need to simplify. So we have, this will become, so three to the third power is 27 X cubed minus 16 times three is 48 X. So that would be a horizontal shrink by a factor of three, okay? So horizontal shrink is going to make this look narrower and a vertical stretch is also going to make this look. So if these all, you would notice both of these graphs are going to look narrower than the original. Okay, narrower or steeper. Okay. <clears throat> okay, last example, combining transformations in order. So it says the graph of y equals x squared undergoes the following transformations in order. Find the equation of the graph that results. So a horizontal shift, five units to the left. So this is going to be y equals, so we have five units to the left, so it's going to be x plus five squared. And then it says a vertical stretch by a factor of three. So that would be three x plus five squared. And then a vertical translation, four units up. So it would be plus four. Okay, so that's just combining all of these transformations together. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions.